ultimately, the deepest hunger is that we all seek wholeness and we all seek completeness. The narrative in our society informs us that the only way to do that is through things, through material goods. Currently, it hasn't always been that way. And if you don't know that the hunger is something much deeper than that, we seek our wholeness and our completeness in other people. We're looking for other people to, to complete us. Or if we just get you know, the right house or the right job or the right car, somehow we're, we're going to be complete. And uh, this is where this conversation is so powerful. Because when you have a generation of young people, this is what's happening right now. In our public schools in the United States, I, I don't know about other countries, school teachers can only teach whatever curricula is approved by the school boards. And the school boards uh, are, and, and that varies from state to state here in the United States. But right now, what our young people are being taught is that we humans are flawed by our very nature the very nature of our existence that as i mentioned earlier that emotion is a flaw because it clouds our judgments uh you know our conception the, the, our ability to to heal our bodies and all of these things so we're being taught young people are being taught that, that they are are flawed and if you're flawed you need a savior and that savior is being touted as technology so there now is a movement and young people are idolizing the technology because they've been taught that they are inferior. So what we're finding is that a movement to replace our natural biology and many of our natural functions with synthetics and with artificial functions. What is not being taught is that when you begin to replace human biology with computer chips, chemicals in the blood, artificial, including artificial immune response, those natural systems begin to atrophy. And because the body says, oh, you know, something else is doing this for me. Maybe I don't need to do this anymore. This is how you lose a species. Because in one generation, and this is being pushed right now, it's being pushed big, big, big time. And a lot of this, uh, Anastasia, you identify this so correctly, it's coming from powers that be that we may or may not be aware of. And, and they used to talk about this and it was no big deal. What's changed is the technology now is available to implement these ideas and the policies are being written through the United Nations, for example. Uh, and the World Economic Forum envisions these. They signed an agreement in 2019 with the United Nations to implement many of these policies. And now the UN is lobbying the current administration and individual states to adopt, you know, replacing these biological functions. So young people that are being taught that, of course, they feel that they're inferior and they feel that, you know, they need something outside of themselves. And I think this is where we owe it to our young people to inform them that they're not what they've been told. And there's so much more than they've been led to believe and share with them what the science says about the deep potential, for example, the potential to self-regulate our biology in a way that no other form of life can do. We're the only form of life that can harmonize the neural network in the heart, the neural network in the brain, into a single potent network of coherence that triggers a whole cascade, a super immune response, super, it awakens longevity enzymes, super cognition, super learning. And there are people that know how to do this, and the techniques have been preserved in so many of our ancient and indigenous traditions. But to share with our young people that, that there's so much more to them than, than they've been led to believe. And also, and when I say this to young people, they're blown away. If you embrace that technology, you embrace a computer chip in, in your brain, which is what the Neuralink company right now is, the FDA just approved Neuralink chips in the human brain. So the young people saying, sweet, you know, I can do my gaming without, uh, without a wire connecting me to, to my Bluetooth technology to my keyboard. Sweet. Here's what they don't get. Those chips are fast and they're efficient. That's true. But the chips are always limited by the physics of the stuff they are made of. And they are not scalable. 
when it comes to the human body, the human neuron, we don't know the top end of how fast neurons are able to, to convey information. And the reason we don't know is because every time we think we reach a limit, the human body is able to adapt and then transcend that limit. So now we have to have new brain states. You know, we've got the gamma and we've got the hyper gamma. Now we've got the epsilon brain states because we keep pushing that limit. You can't do that with a computer chip. And the, the same with the, you know, the, the immune response in the human body, longevity enzymes, all of that. So, so my personal experience, when I share this with young people, first they're in awe, and then they say, how come nobody told us this? How come we don't know about this? And then they begin to think of themselves differently. We are more than random mutations and lucky biology. And what that more is, is a whole conversation that we can have. But the fact that we are, are the, the science does not support that we are the product of random processes. And that alone tells us that there is something within us that is worth preserving, worth exploring, and we don't want to give it away to technology until we know what that is. And, and that's one of my primary messages. This generation, we, we don't want to give our biology away to the synthetics before we know what we're giving away. We don't know that right now.